this is the last chapter as far as the EV is concerned. Chapter 7, battery charging and swapping and infrastructure management. After this, we are going to primarily look at renewable energy. Solar, little bit of wind, solar and wind and essentially after that how to build large storage batteries which is important grid batteries and then get to the overall conclusion of what can we get with renewable energy. Leave the renewable energy to later part, let us look at battery charging, swapping and infrastructure management. So, as I pointed out this chapter, we will look at batteries, battery charging and swapping and infrastructure management. This is the outline of the chapter. We will start off what is a charger, electric vehicle charger. The chargers are believed to be either slow or fast charger. So, we will look at that. We will look at swapping. We introduced it briefly in the first chapter that how swapping is a very important option for India, we will look at it. We will look at standardization, why and what needs to be standardized. We then will very briefly look at onboard chargers, what is actually on the vehicle, it is a part of the vehicle onboard. Then we will look at public chargers, public chargers are kept outside, you go and charge like a petrol pump, you go and charge. Then we will look at bulk charger, bulk charger will be used for swapping, that is where batteries will be available and you will be able to swap. And we will very briefly look at economics of public chargers in Indian context and finally, infrastructure management. Okay. This is what the chapter will consist of. Let me start with EV charger introduction. Basically, what are you doing? It, a charger charges electric vehicle. In some sense, no drift different from a cell phone charger. Hmm? Normally, a cell phone charger you take a USB and connect. USB is the point of charger and then you connect to a wall socket. Hmm? The charger is with you, charger is just plugged in directly in 230 volts. Okay. Now, the first question is therefore, you grid is usually AC, it is a single phase 230 volt or you can use three phase 440 volts. In India, single phase 230 volt AC is available everywhere, 15 amperes is available, 15 ampere, we normally do not use 15 amperes, we use 5 amperes that small plug, uh, but uh, uh, 15 amperes is available for example, our air conditioners, our washing machines, some of the refrigerators use 15 amperes, slightly bigger plug. So, you can use 5 ampere or 15 ampere, 15 amperes will give you 3.3 kilowatt or we use 3 phase AC 415 volt uh, and up to 125 amperes and this gives you 50 kilowatt. For higher power one may have to take grid input at higher voltage, not at 440. Sometimes for power greater than 15 kilowatt, three phase, one may have to go for to tap the power, power grid. Not this is necessary because th three phase should give you, but what happens is that transformer may not have the capacity and therefore, we may have to do this. And what is the plug point that we use? Well, similar to the plug point, except there is one difference. They are industrial. Three phase Indian plugs and sockets, three phase or single phase, this is single phase or three phase industrial plugs and socket. This is two phase plus earth, these two sockets, plugs and sockets that is slightly different. Now, why industrial? Because you are going to take it out, put it, take it out, put it many, many, many times, two, three thousand times. Uh, the socket also has to be reliable and plugs has to be also required reliable. Uh, and therefore, special design are there, there is reliability and they, they are also something that can be connected and stay there. Three phase, these are three phase, 
uh, and normally they are done IP 67. IP 67 basically means rain can fall whatever happens it would not disturb. So, these are the single phase and three phase so plug and socket that are used. But what does the charger do? Charger will take AC, there will be a battery inside the vehicle and this will be the charger. Whenever you connect to AC, you will always do two things. One is protection and second is metering. Protection is important because whatever happens, it must not create short, it must not result into some kind of shock to anyone. So, any charges should have a circuitry which will take care of protection and also metering because you, you will be billing the customer. If you do not have to build the customer, metering will not be there. Uh, so, if it is onboard charger which is going to always stay with me, my billing will be done by wherever I connect, then there the not of the, the billing will not metering will not be included. But in public charges, metering will have to be included. There is charger battery always charges using DC, it never charges using AC. So, you will have to convert AC to the right DC voltage. And then you have to worry about protection. What happens if there is a short circuit? If there is a short circuit, huge amount of current is going to flow. So, since battery charged by DC power, a charger is primary in AC DC converter or a rectifier, and you have to worry about two things other than the voltages and currents, its efficiency. Is lot of power wasted in the charger itself? Sometime lot of power is wasted in the charger itself. Hmm. And number two, what is called power factor correction. Now, those who are from electrical engineering will understand power factor corrections, other may not. What is a power factor correction? Now, essentially, whenever you use electricity, you are, it is a, it is a AC electricity. You will, if it is a resistive load, the current will be of course, directly proportional to the voltage, it will be in the phase with the voltage. If the load is not resistive, but inductive or capacitive, then the current will be out of phase of the voltage. So, incoming voltage is there and it is taking consumption out of phase. When it takes consumption out of phase, that is what is called power factor. Effectively, you take more power than what is metered. You say I am taking 1 kilowatt, but actually you are taking, you are loading the grid by higher power and grid does not like it. So, it will demand that your power factor is not very good high. Power factor should be 0 0.95, 0 0.98, maybe a little may allow 0 0.92, Any AC to DC conversion will result into power factor uh, being high. So, you have to design your charger to give you a power factor correction such that effective power factor that the grid sheet is only 0 0.9597. So, that is what is done is the circuitry that is required and low cost charger that you get often do not have the power factor correction. Our, our um, um, plugs that we used for cell phone charging do not have that. In fact, small amount of power it does not care. In vehicles, we are putting larger amount of power. So, we have to worry about it. As I told you, you need protection at input as well as output. And it may have voltage and current control, because battery may require a voltage, different voltage, DC voltage, but different voltage. When it is empty, it may require 1 volt. When it is full, it requires a different volt. So, you may have to change the voltage and almost always you change what is called current. 
Hmm. So, you charge using two modes what is called a constant current. So, you see here in the beginning you always charge using constant current. So, charger will be designed to give you a constant current, you will fix the current hmm, whatever and it will give you a constant current. So, the, in the beginning the battery will be charging at constant current. Okay. So, after some time when the battery is close to being full, close to being full, the voltage of course, will keep on increasing. When the battery is close to being full, the voltage has increased, then you do not charge using constant current. You actually clamp the voltage, this is the maximum voltage. If battery's maximum voltage is 58 volt, I will clamp the 58 volt. And now, I am doing very low rate charging, slower and slower charging. This is the way I am charging. This is called constant voltage charging. So, any electric vehicle, any battery in the electric vehicle should be charged in a constant current, constant voltage. Constant current, you want to push in so much current, so that it can charge fast. But once you come close to 80 percent, 85 percent, you do not push that much current, that damages the battery. You allow the battery to just reduce current just slowly, very slowly, very slowly. It has implications, we will talk about it. What are the other interfaces that a charger should have? These are optional, they, they may be optional, but generally desirable. First is a charger must have a communication interface. So, charger is not just charging, our cell phone chargers just charge, they do not have any communication to them, a small amount of charge. A charger, a public charger or a vehicle charger will have two communication interface. First is you have to talk to the vehicle or you have to talk to the battery in the vehicle. Why? Because you do not know what the battery requires. Does battery requires how much current does it require? Does it want to charge fast? Does it want to charge slow? Huh? A vehicle may want to charge fast, higher current. Is it in constant current mode? What is the voltage required? The charger will adjust to the voltage required and current required by the battery. That is the reason it has to talk to the battery. That communication protocol, it will ask what voltage do you want, what current do you want constantly, because in the beginning you may give a current voltage will keep changing. So, you will have to keep on saying now I want a higher voltage, I want to keep the current constant. Later on you will sort of say no, no I want to keep the uh, voltage constant anymore. Now, reduce the current, uh, that communication is very important. You also need a charger to communicate with the grid. Now, why else does it have to communicate with the grid? Of course, for billing it has to, to do communicate with the bill. Well, it does not have to, it could have just measured the, measured the uh, amount of energy used. But a grid may tell at what rate should we charge. If there is a communication, the charge can vary. See, remember that this charger may be taking large amount of power, may be taking 50 kilowatt hour that is a large amount of power. Now, grid may say well, well, well I am actually now little overloaded, I do not take 50 kilowatt hour, take only 10 kilowatt. But I as a user may say no, 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 but I want higher power, because I want to finish charging and go, I cannot wait. Then grid will say okay, then pay me higher. So, it becomes time of use metering. Now, that requires communication with the grid. Grid also should know okay, how much power is being drawn, so that it actually balances all the uh, loads. It should know the load, because the grid always, I think one thing about electricity, I do not know whether you know, how is the electricity produced on the grid? There are large number of generators, thousands of generators all over the country they are all feeding. 
whatever electricity is generated at every instant should be used at that instant. Suppose 10 gigawatt is being generated, 10.1 gigawatt is generated. You have to use 10.1 at that time. You cannot use 10.05. What will happen to the rest? Well, whatever the losses are on the grid, you take that into account. Including the losses in the grid, you have to consume 10.1. You cannot consume 10.05 or even 08. So, either you have to reduce the generation. So, you always have to make match generation which is called supply to the load which is demand. This is otherwise you need to have energy storage where you can dump energy into the storage and take it out when you need it. And that is what battery does and we will talk about the importance of that. So far the grid does not have storage. 